in order to become a good singer, you have to know where does your sound come from? And your sound comes where? From? From your larynx, right? It doesn't come from your head, it doesn't come from your nose. It doesn't come from your ears. It comes from here. And we have to understand and we have to love our instrument, no? It's very delicate, but it can give you so much joy, this one. Right? So, phonation. By definition, everybody say the word phonation. Phonation. Okay. Phonation is basically, let's, uh, let's have the definition there. A production of vocal sounds. Meaning, when you phonate, you make a sound coming from your larynx or your voice. Basically means you're using your voice to make a sound. One of those, no? So, say hi. So, thank you very much, hello. Um, when you said hi, you phonated, right? Everybody hum. Okay, that is phonation, right? Now, that is the most basic, without doing anything, everybody just follow me. And Okay, now do this one. You touch your vocal cords, then you do the other. And Okay. Do you feel that something is working there? That means that there is air passing causing your vocal cord folds to vibrate and when they vibrate, a sound happens, right? So that is where everything starts. Before you go to, ah, before all of that, you go to, mm, ah, the miracle happens right here, right? From that very, very small sound, you can create so much. From. But you have to go back to that very first sound. Because we want to imitate. We want to sound like, you know, I'm, I really don't know the artist anymore. And it's, it's top artist I use, uh, Spotify or, you know. But uh, when you listen to music, we want to follow. But we don't know that we have our own ability to create our own unique sounds. Okay? So now, let's go to the next uh, no, slide, please. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, can I see the next slide up there? Ayan, actually it got reversed now. So in phone eight, let's start. I'm going to give you a very, very simple exercise. Okay? Don't open your mouth yet. We'll just hum on this, right? And don't try to change your most natural sound. This is my most natural sound. Right? It sounds like I'm talking, right? It doesn't sound like, right? We'll, we'll hold that for five seconds. One, two, three, and. That's so beautiful, no? So, that is the easiest sound that we can make. But now, we can enhance that sound. We enhance that sound through what we call vocal resonance. Everybody say the word vocal resonance. Vocal resonance. There's a definition after it. Everybody kindly read. Okay, cavities, spaces, right? So I'm not sure if it's in the next slide. Can you kindly check the next slide, please? Okay, it, we're gonna have to go back to the to the previous picture. I got my slide flipped. All right, so there are different cavities, no, in your in your head <laughs> and in your throat, no. So these are these cavities. There can be you know air filled. So let's see. You can see where the larynx is right there around the throat area. Then you also have what you call the oral cavity. 
that's where your mouth is. There's space, okay? There's the nasal cavity, so there's a space behind your nose. There's the pharynx, so there's a space behind your mouth, right? Then you have your, your esophagus. So basically you have lots of spaces, right? The very first space that we're going to change, you and I, is the mouth, because that's the easiest to change. Now, I don't know, I probably can't see your mouths, no? But, with, without the mask on, but we'll give it a shot. Now, I hope you can see mine. Can you see me? Yes. Am I visible? Okay. The first manipulation of space is the mouth. That's the easiest thing to do, because you can either close your mouth, and you can open your mouth, right? All you need to do is just do this one, right? So, so those who have uh, locked jaw, you're gonna have a... This might be an issue for you, but I want you to try. Follow me. If you can see me, follow my motion. Okay. We're going to make our first sounds. Okay. As I said, there's no such thing as beautiful voice. There's only your voice. So we're gonna hum this one. Mm, we're good. Then we're going to go to an ah. Mm, ah. We're gonna do that. Okay. So follow me. you need your breathing, etc. Second, I, it wasn't listed there, but everybody was on was in tune, right? Walang sintonado. Everybody hit the same note. Okay? So we're going to do it again for memory. So when you open your mouth, don't judge. Ay pangin. Just be as it is. Just hit the note. One, two, three, this time we're going to do a O, Mo, okay? One, two, three, and. Okay, and we hit another goal. We hit loud and soft, correct? The smaller the mouth opening, normally, the softer the sound output. The, the bigger the resonance, the bigger the resonating chamber, the louder the sound. Correct? Yes. Okay. So let's try one more time for, for memory. One, two, three, and. inhibits free sound because you want sound to be free, diba? Have you ever seen a singer na struggling? Ay, ipit, ipit poses. Matas high note, right? Ah! Ah! Diba? And we get embarrassed for the singer, diba? We feel their pain, right? Okay? That's because they have, they don't have free sound, diba? Oh, look at me. Look at me, I'm just gonna hold the note. Ah, correct? Alright, sounds easy enough. Did it sound easy to you? Did I look like I was struggling? Okay, I'll make it a free, even more free. Ah, it's so easy, 
Why? Because my sound is free, right? So you don't feel my struggle because there is no struggle. Well, not yet. Maybe later I'll do some singing. See some real struggling right there. Um, so what inhibits the free sound? What's stopping you from creating a sound that's free? Well, let's see. Next slide. Thank you, ma'am. Ayan. Everybody say muscle tension. Muscle tension. Okay. Muscle tension. You're tense. Okay. Let's go to the three kinds of muscle tensions. And the next slide, please. Ayan. Uh, does this look like a tense job? Yeah. Okay. Let's try. Mm, then after that, I want you to do this one. Okay? So you're gonna follow me. One, two, three, and... Oh, and something changed, right? It wasn't just your, it wasn't just your mouth that changed. Your face has changed and the sound changed, right? And it didn't sound nice. It sounded what? Angry! Right? Diba? Why? Because there was tension. So let's go to the next. And now, does this look free to you? Okay, for most part, especially for pop singers, caution down. In the world of classical music, this isn't that free. It can be free, but not yet, especially when you're a beginner, right? So, we smile on stages when, when we sing, we, we smile, right? Smile, diba? Nice. But the, but the reality is, when you sing classical, diba? Try smiling. Diba? There's, you're tensing your cheek muscles. You're tensing your mouth muscles. So, in the beginning, when you're not yet, you know, when you're still learning, I don't encourage people to use a smile technique. In the beginning, maybe later you can smile. Yeah, sure. No? Why? Because yeah, there is muscle tension. Right? Do this one. Do that one. Three and. Okay. So you notice the sound was also different. It was a bit wider it was, and a bit less free. No? So just be careful, um, you ask your conductors or your teachers, Sir, is my sound free? No. It could be also your smile. I'm going to do E, e, e O, o, o. U. Okay, my, for U, I have to move a little, no? Have you seen ventriloquists? You know what a ventriloquist is? You're my puppet. Hey, hey, good morning. This is my friend, diba? And you can barely see their lips move. So they're, that's sort of what they're doing, no? So everybody, I want you to try this exercise. Without moving your mouth so much, we're going to pronounce each vowel with the tongue. Follow me? A, A, E, 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 e O, o, o U. U. I wish in another world, we'd have clear face mask so I could see what your lips look like, no? But see, you did it. You can actually pronounce. So now, if we do a, we do a vocalist, for example, A, E, E, O, U, and we're gonna hold it. A, E, E, O, U. Without barely opening the mouth. Can you try that? Which is more legato, the 
first or the second? Which is more legato, when you move your mouth or not? No. <laughs> the second was more legato, right? Versus I, right? So the thumb is very important when you want to do legato. And it's very free. Did you struggle? No? That was very easy, correct? Alright. Next slide, please. Alright. We, now we did the A, I, E, O, U. I want you to sing A, I, E, O, U while doing this. Is that possible? Yeah. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try to do it for you. I'll demonstrate first and you follow. Easy sound. Easy, free sound. Oh yeah, you try that. There is a, the sound's gonna change, obviously. Let's see how change the resonating chamber, no? But I want you to try this. And and you practice that at home, you get a very free sound, right? In fact. You might be thinking this is a funny exercise. It's actually one of the most important exercises you, you can get to achieve the free sound. Because, well, I'll explain it later. Next slide, please. And then you have your articulators. I'll explain after. Next, uh, next please. So if your mouth, your lips, your tongue, so as I explained, if you're probably seeing Broadway, you probably want to use all your articulators, your jaw, your your lips. Would you dance with me? You have to use all of those, right? Uh, what's the next thing? Everybody say good morning. Good morning. Now I want you to really use your lips, your mouth, and say good morning. Good morning. Yeah, different, right? So, you have to have some command over your articulators if you want to be extra clear with what you're saying. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, before we get there, no? uh, so the previous thing was freeing the jaw, freeing the, freeing the tongue, right? In order to get the free sound. Now, I'm going to get to a very important topic, something that's very close to my heart, no? And something that, in my opinion, you're going to have a difficult time learning somewhere else, no? This applies more to the adults in the room and those who pass puberty. But this is called voice classification. Everybody say the word voice classification. Voice classification. Okay. I'll have to get up to the piano. Confused. Raise your hands. Be honest. I'm not talking about, you know, confused about your vocal classification. That's what I meant, no? All right. That means you're not sure where you are, right? On your piece of paper, I don't know if it's on your piece of paper, it says my vocal classification. Probably not, no? Does it say no? On this, on the, uh, the of you. All right. All right. You can hear my voice right now. By the way, I'm talking. Am I a baritone, a bass, or a tenor? What do you think I am? Baritone. Okay, okay. Raise of hands for tenor. Okay. Raise of hands for bass. Wow, some of you really think I'm a bass, huh? Raise of hands for baritone, somewhere in the middle. All right, so we have, I think, my baritone one. But we have some people in the audience who think I'm a tenor, and very few think I'm a bass. 
Wow. Right? So the, re the answer is I'm a lyric baritone. No? Just by the way I'm talking, we have a divided audience. Okay. The reason why I had such a hard time learning technique was because even my teachers didn't know if I was a tenor or a baritone. So if I was a tenor, they're going to make me sing very high notes, right? And I was taught that way. And as I said, that can lead to confusion. Uh, do you understand basketball references? You know, most of you understand the game of basketball, right? Okay. Assuming a boy, assuming a grown uh, college student around this tall, yeah, came here. And he said he wanted to play basketball. What position do you think he would be? He'd probably be a point guard, correct? Yeah. Because he's just this short. He's the shortest guy on the team. Give him the ball. Guy this tall comes in. What would he be? He'd be a center, right? Now, if you ask a short guy, no offense to people who are short, no? but if you ask the shorter guy to play center, what do you think would happen? Right? Do you think he can get any rebounds? Zero. Do you think he can defend the other team's center? Not a chance. And the same way, if you have a really, really tall guy, and you ask him to be a point guard, what's going to happen? And he probably can dribble the, the ball very well. And he's going to get the ball stolen 10 out of 10 times. So why is it so important to classify, know your voice classification? Because you have to know what you're capable of. If we misclassify you, for example, if you're, if you're bass and we ask you to sing tenor, how can we expect you to sing the high notes? If you're a tenor, we ask you to sing bass, how can, how can we expect you to sing low notes? At the same time, if we ask you to do that, are you going to be happy? No, diba? So, voice classification is very important, no? So, I know there are some conductors here, and you have your own methods of classifying your singers. So let's, uh, next slide please. Ayan. So there are four basic voice classifications in a choir. We have the sopranos, who are, what makes the sopranos different from the altos? Who sings the high notes? The sopranos. Who sings the low notes? The altos. Okay. For the men, we have the tenors, they sing the high notes, the basses, they sing the low notes. Okay. In solo, we also have voice classifications, no? Next, please. So we have sopranos. That doesn't change. Normally, they sing the high notes. The altos, we call them mezzo-sopranos. Our very dear Mam Jai is a mezzo-soprano. We have tenors, and we have our baritones. Generally, we have our baritones. Next slide, please. Okay. 
This is how complicated it gets in the world of uh, solo singing, no? Because we have subcategories. It's just like saying, if we have the guards, we have the forwards, and we have the center in basketball, what are the two kinds of guards generally? We have the point guard and we have the shooting guard. For the forwards, we have our power forward, we have our small forwards, and we have our centers. For sopranos, we have the lyrics, we have the coloraturas and the dramatics. I'll give you a very another reference, no? As I said, it's very difficult to misclassify people because we're asking them to be what they're not. Who here loves dogs? And we have a lot of dog lovers. I'm a dog lover myself. I have two Labradors. Huh? The Labrador, I would think, would be Amy Rick. Someone just your very average dog. Right in the middle. Family friendly, the most lovable, the most common. So when we have the lyrics, those are the, the most common voices. Coloraturas are light. They can sing high. They can sing fast. Have you heard mga, yung mga singers who do a lot of prancing? Ah, 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 ah. Those are coloraturas from the term to colorate, no? To, so I would think that the coloraturas, if they were a dog, they'd probably be a shih tzu, chihuahua, siguro, no? What are the small agile dogs? Yan. Then what about the dramatics? These are your mastiffs, your big dogs, no? They bark very loud. No? So those are how we... Uh, can you imagine if we ask a Shih Tzu to be a guard dog of the house? Then aren't they guard dogs? Or if we ask a Chihuahua to be the guard dog? Doesn't work, right? Or what if we bring what, what are the human enormous dog breeds? You, have, uh, it, you can't really bring your German Shepherd to the mall. Say, baka, ano, di ba? So next. Next slide, please. So our mezzo sopranos, the same. We have subcategories. We have lyric, coloratura, dramatics. Next, please. For our tenors, we have the same, we have lyrics, we have leggero, which is the, the coloratura version of the men, and we have our dramatics, and lastly, we have the baritones. For our lyrics, dramatics, and we have the bass baritones, no? and lastly, we have other categories aside from the, the Aside from those standard categories, we have uh, special categories. We have the counter tenors. These are the men who sing soprano. Are th do we have any counter tenors here? Male sopranos? No? Male altos? Do we have male altos? We have one. Okay. Those are counter tenors. We have the contraltos, which are the ladies with very deep voices. And we have the basses, which are very, very deep voices. And those are very rare. We don't have any of them. Next, we have, the last is the deepest of all the deep. We have the basso profundo. Uh, usually, it's only the Euro Europeans have uh, profound basses. Very, very deep voices. So, next please. Okay. 
this is a good thing. When we determine your vocal category, your conductor has to ask you, has to have certain categories. First is the range. How low can you sing and how high can you sing? Okay, next, you have your voice quality and color. As I said, my voice cut, my voice quality is when I talk is tenorish. That's why it can get confusing. And lastly, and everybody is saying pasajo. Okay, who here has never heard of the word pasajo before? It's your first time. Okay, better yet, who has heard of the word pasajo before? One, two, three. Okay. Uh, so can we get a definition? No? Do you know what pasacho is? Okay, uh, I just want to get a definition from the audience. Do you think you can give an answer for, with a microphone? Uh, there's a microphone behind what are we doing? Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. The pasajo is a very important uh, concept in singing. Huh? It basically tells you what you are. There's a the definition of pasajo comes next. Okay, can everybody read this definition? The passaggio is the transition area between vocal registers. Okay, who here has heard of chest voice? No? Who here has heard of head voice? Okay, who here has heard of neither? First time to hear chest voice and head voice? Okay. I want you to guys do a chest voice. Say hi. Hi. Yes. yes. I'm going to do a head voice and it's not falsetto. Hi. this to you in a bit 
and we're probably going to have need some volunteers after this, no? All right, can we have next slide, please? Ayan, uh, so why is it crucial to know your voice classification? You know why? Because if you're a, if, if you're mis uh, misplaced or miscategorized, you won't be able to do what you can naturally do. And especially for the conductors, how do you know which vocal category to put your choir singer? Is my choir singer soprano, bass, tenor, alto? Right? I've met, I've seen so many uh, singers who are miscategorized. I had once, I had one student. He was a bass in the choir. When I vocalized him, he had flying high notes, easy high notes, high A's, high D flats. And I had another student who was a tenor in the choir, but he sounded like me. I checked him out. He said, "I think you're a baritone." He wanted to be a tenor, but he didn't have the high notes. And his passaggio was that of a baritone. So how can you change that, right? Next, uh, some will say it's an area, and there are different passaggios, but I'm just going to give you one passaggio, the segundo passaggio, which is F. F is the note, the high note. F above middle C. Next. Sopranos and tenors usually can vocalize, real sopranos and real tenors can vocalize to a high C. Okay. Can we connect this piece? And the piano. Number one, my passaggio is E flat. 
So as I them as I said, a pasajo is a transition area. It's when the voice starts to change. I'm going to play a D flat. I'm going to go to an E flat. You're going to hear my voice change. Okay, this is a D. This is an E flat. So if I sing like this. Did you hear my voice change? Yes. Okay, I'm going to go from no passaggio. Did my voice change? Well, it went higher, but it didn't really change so much, right? C, D, E flat. I'm going to change my magic voice will hit the passaggio at E flat. Did you hear my voice go a bit tighter in the last note? Yeah. It went like that, right? That's my passaggio. If a tenor, if I was a tenor, my voice would come close at E flat. If you master the passaggio, you can go higher. You can go up. If you don't have passaggio, you struggle. Okay. Uh, you need a voice teacher for that, actually. <laughs> to, to really figure that out, no? Next, the effective range of a baritone and mezzo-soprano, when you vocalize them, is G to G. Of course, they can go higher, they can go lower. G. That's why baritones are usually basses in choirs, no? Because we can do this one. Basses, let me hear you. Known. You can go lower, but effective voice. Then you can hit. Then you can hit G in the highest. Right? That's how I know I'm a baritone because those, that's really my range. If I was not a baritone. Or not an extraordinary, not a, an ordinary baritone. I probably hit much higher. I can't hit that. Not in my real voice. No? That's a tenor. We have smoky colors in the upper register. We don't have much ring. We have ring, but it's not the same as tenors. I'll hit a high note, my F. It's kind of kind of dark. Tenors of beat. So that's how you can tell that I'm a baritone. Now, we're going to need some volunteers this time now. Some brave solos. Uh, can I have someone who's probably really a bass? I need a volunteer up on stage. Yes. Good singer. Not so good singer, it's alright. Tenor, get ready. <laughs> and I, let's let's have a let's have a, a group of pieces na lang. Singing is pretty great. 